Hello, this is Reiki Master Angelia with part five of uh, Works of the Hearts, um, Reiki 2 and Natural Complementary Healing Training. Um, last time uh, we had talked about um, the Power Sandwich, um, so um, and that was for absentee healing. Um, and um, you know, um, I want to share a little thing uh, uh, when I was out doing things in the community. Um, I was uh, associated with Compassionate Louisville. Um, compassion is an important thing. Um, that's why we bother to heal people. Um, empowerment is an important thing. Um, this is from a handout that they gave. Um, and that's something I did, you know, through life coaching. Try and empower people to have, live their best life. Um, inclusion. Um, all men are created equal. Um, and if God created a man and a woman... Um, and then their descendants spread all throughout the world. Um, he's probably not okay um, with you saying any of his descendants are, you know, lower than you. Um, intention. You should always set intention. And your intention is where your motivation comes from. And that's going to decide whether, you know, you're going to do some good or not. Um, awareness and understanding. Um, and that's why I bother educating anyone so they're not ignorant. So they understand what I'm saying. They're aware of what I'm saying. You know, as Paul said, I would not have you be ignorant. <laughs> um, transparency. You know, anybody can just ask me a question. I have, you know, all this documentation and stuff behind me. If anybody wants to know anything, I am above board full transparent. Um, abundance. And that's something you teach people. Um, I've run across a lot of women in abusive situations, um, and they had a traditional upbringing. The man works, woman's at home, um, and if that's what you want, that's fine. But what my grandmother taught me, and what I fully believe, um, is that women should have their own money. Women should have their own life, um, and that way no one can control you. Um, universally positive. You know, again, stay positive. Try to not let all the negative crap drag you down. Try to not be negative. And I know it's hard. Yes, it's hard for me, so I know it's hard. <laughs> Social innovation. Um, you know, come up with ideas to help people. Come up with, you know, ideas that will work around people. You know, um, paying it forward. You know, do good for other people, even if you don't expect you're going to get anything back. Um, and hospitality. Um, that's something I've been trying, and I don't know that it's going to happen here in this city of Louisville. Maybe somewhere, but not here. <laughs> okay. The next thing is a chakra labyrinth. Um, path one, red, is the root chakra, or the foundation. Um, path two is orange, or the sacral chakra, um, relationship. Path three is yellow, the solar plexus chakra, individuation. Path four is green, or the heart chakra, for compassion. See how the compassion tied in there? Um, path five is blue, the throat chakra, for expression. Path six is indigo, the third eye chakra, for vision. Path seven is violet, for the crown chakra, or spiritual connection. Integration path is magenta. For the five elements, earth, water, air, fire, and ether, and the center is white for stillness. Um, so, you know, if you were to get this, and you can actually find copies online of different, you know, um, labyrinths. Um, and you can see here what this looks like um, in the different colors. And so as you go through the labyrinth, um, and I know a woman in Bedford, Kentucky, who has a, a labyrinth on her property that's pretty cool, um, or she used to. Um, and, uh, you know, you go through this, and by the time you get to the center, um, the goal to it is to have worked out some things. And I actually did on some relationships going through this labyrinth with these intentions. Um, so, again, intention um, will kind of help you with a lot of your things. You know where your motivation is coming from if you set an intention. Okay, we're going to talk about the history of the labyrinth from the Keeper of the Circles by Toby Evans.
compiled by Reverend Patrice Joy Masterson, MA, Reiki Master Instructor, and handed on to me. <laughs> um, labyrinths were found on the planet much earlier than mazes when all the principal deities were female. Yes, once upon a time, you know, it was all about goddesses. It is possible that the concentric circles and spiral patterns originated as a dance movement. But no one knows their true beginnings. Um, if you go back, you know, Shiva was a guy, but the theory was he danced the universe into being. But no one knows their true beginnings. The first labyrinth representation was a square seven circuit design incised on a clay tablet from Pylos, Greece, dated 1200 BC. A long time ago. In the Middle Ages, the labyrinths were built into cathedrals. They were used as a substitute for the yearly pilgrimage to Jerusalem when Christians could not make the dangerous trip due to the Crusades. Um, so they would walk the labyrinth and then in their minds and in their spirits go to Jerusalem because they couldn't physically go. It is symbolic of arriving at the center of oneself. In the center of the labyrinth, one can connect to the skill point, the void, or the great mystery. This is also considered the center of self, or the place to readjust our focus, to recharge our batteries, and to reconnect on all levels. And a lot of times we need to do this, because the world will just scatter you around. Walking the labyrinth is stepping out of time. But it is not an escape. It doesn't eliminate the chaos of life. But it takes us to a silent, centered place to deal with it. It can be a symbol of our life's journey, leading through all the reversals and constant turns that are experienced in living. Because, as Jesus said, it's not going to be easy. You know, he suffered, we're going to suffer. Life is just... That way here on this world. Stepping into the paths and circles of the labyrinth is a way to move through the gateway. It brings to the surface those things we are working on in deep levels. It is like cleaning buried energy so the armor of the ego and raptured self can melt away. When faced with stress depression, or difficult situations, it is easy to become confused and stuck in resistance. Fear and polarized positions. Don't we know it, especially nowadays. After emptying the debris, an infilling begins. Adjusting our outlook and renewing our sense of appreciation and trust as balance returns. This can be felt as an electromagnetic vibration from head to toe as all our circuits are replenished. We become aware of being plugged into the vibration of who we are at our core. And yes, we have circuits. They're called nerves. <laughs> Nerve cells. It is about coming home to something that we dearly love. Something that has always been a part of us. The purpose of walking a labyrinth is to provide each person who enters it with an opportunity to meet themselves by reconnecting with their innate wholeness. It awakens the inner voice to connect our inner and outer worlds. It enables us to trace our internal journey and record it in a larger pattern aligned with the vibration of our own master plan. Because when you were a kid, you knew who you were and you know what you wanted. You came from center out. You know, but as adults, you're taught to tamp it down, do the adult thing, deal with all this. And then all this weighs on your mind and your spirit. Um, and you forget who you are. And you're just living in this world being tossed about back and forth. And sometimes you just need to come together and center and figure things out. And walking a labyrinth can help you work on things. Because you work on that one thing as you're walking in a circle. And it helps. <clears throat> The details of our physical world will look differently to us and will start taking care of themselves when we begin to place our attention on our spiritual life and on the energy that governs all life, um, which is God. 
Since a labyrinth is a vortex in which the veils are thinner between the worlds, you may see elemental guardian spirits of the land and fairies from the middle world and messengers from your animal totems, if you believe in that sort of thing. Again, your experience um, is something that makes you feel or see a thing, you know, and if that's not something you believe in, then surely you're, it's just not going to become a thing. So, you know, in the center of the labyrinth is this concentrated energy. All your thoughts and intentions are amplified. Beneath the center is a huge geyser that is formed by the spirals of energy pulling inward on the water table beneath the surface of the earth. And of course, that all depends on where it is, of course. You can imagine this coming up through your tailbone and clearing your chakras as it shoots out your crown like a fountain of healing water filled with rainbow light. Or, you know, versus water, I, I like to think of the energy. The energy, you know, that God has imbued the earth with life um, and coming up and cleansing you. Uh, excuse me. A beam of light is also created that shines both directions. Upward into the atmosphere and down to the center of the earth core. And if you don't believe there's energy like that, you need to just look at the northern lights. <laughs> you know? This energy can be beamed to others at a distance while you are in the labyrinth. It can also be accessed with a finger labyrinth to produce the same healing connection for yourself and others. You can draw a labyrinth on a piece of paper and trace it with your finger while only thinking about the one thing, you know, and doing that kind of activity and thinking about that can actually help you solve some problems. An artist and labyrinth enthusiast, Sue Ann Foster, says, The labyrinth invites us to quiet the mind, calm the body, and stir the spirit. The analytical mind can rest in labyrinth, for there is nothing for it to judge, and it isn't possible to make a mistake or go the wrong way. There are many occasions associated with rituals of birth, death, rebirth, children's games, protection rituals, initiations, marriages, and in ceremonies to unite heaven and earth, linking to divinity. The earth is unblocking and releasing the old imprints of power and control in a process of reversal to set things in harmony. Walking a labyrinth is an effective way to assist her in the process. We are simultaneously being called as midwives to assist in birthing the new energy. Today, more people are looking for ways to find meaning in their lives. Labyrinths are resurfacing as spiritual tools of transformation connecting us to the wellspring of wisdom within our inner selves. More individuals are led to build a labyrinth on their land as a place for prayer, contemplation, and meditation to problem solve, grieve, and heal. Labyrinths are being built in private and public places in parks, hospitals, corporations, prisons, cemeteries, gardens, schools, community centers, and backyards. They appear as spin points on the Earth's body. They are collective sites that pull energy up from the earth and down from the sky. Anchoring and revealing the grid while holding the new energy for us to receive. They serve as release circles for our personal issues. As well as for the old accumulated energies in the collective consciousness that need to shift. Creating a labyrinth is creating living art. The art of living wisely is the art of changing direction. Those who build a labyrinth are the caretakers, and they have a responsibility to tend it and keep it clear of weeds and negative energies. As you tend the labyrinth, you are clearing your own issues, and this will set up the energy for others to do the same. This is a process of surrender to your highest good. Jan Bradley, Ph.D., captures the process of this exchange when she said, When giving and receiving become one, in that moment, love is born. The labyrinth is the lock, and we are the key. The magic of the labyrinth happens when you allow your head to fall into your heart. As you prepare to make this inner journey, 
you are gathering the connecting pieces from your past that integrated in the infrastructure. By retracing the steps you have taken to arrive at this moment, you will go beyond them. And that's something I like to do if I have a problem. Um, I just go start back and start thinking about, you know, when I was a kid and work my way up. Um, and sometimes the answer will come from something that happened in your past and you can relate to that now. And it has to deal with this. Um, so you can actually labyrinth in your mind. You're going back and circling, you know, uh, back up to now. As you reflect and reweave the past, your future is altered in beneficial ways. A global activation is literally underfoot as labyrinths produce power spots or spinning vortices by drawing solar energy keys to intersect with the underground primary water. This is creating a rapidly growing network across the planet, bringing a new grid into physical form that is founded and grounded in love. Labyrinths are helping to move the energy that has been stuck in our lower three chakras move up into the heart chakra. New energy is streaming into the planet that is giving us spiritual opportunities we never had before. Now is the time that the old male regime is shifting as we become conscious extensions of the mother, father, God. As the male and female aspects of ourselves come into balance, we are being challenged to identify our wounded dysfunctional pieces and to grow them into their intended state of wholeness as we awaken from the illusion of uh, limitation and fear. The labyrinth is a pattern of balance and unity providing us with an opportunity to practice change while feeling grounded and supported. Following the path allows us to slow down our mind chatter, to realign with the infinite wisdom that lies in the stillness. In spite of all their twists and turns, the labyrinth path acts as a reliable compass directing us home. This is part of returning to our fully functioning DNA, which results in the emergence of a new human. Blood tests are already proving that a third strand of DNA has been found in many children and in some adults. Labyrinths are stabilizing stations where people will come to balance and adjust to the new energies. Undoubtedly, we will be seeing and feeling more things that are not easily explained. We don't have to die to have a life review, to move to a higher level of coherence and join with our higher selves. Labyrinths of the Bronze Age have been interpreted as a butterfly, which is a symbol of transformation. Why do you think my works of heart symbol is a butterfly coming out of heart? <laughs> Toby Evans had a channel in her labyrinth that inspires us to become the butterfly as her guidance relates. Envision the polarity you are struggling with as the wings of a butterfly. The old energy pattern exists right beside the new energy you are now awakening within. The body of the butterfly is positioned as the bridge point. It is up to each of you to come into your bodies in a conscious way to acknowledge your old energetic behavior. This acceptance creates the connection point within your body-mind systems, allowing you to see the opposite wing as the mirrored reflection. Instead of focusing on your division, embody the wholeness. This is the transforming power of the new energy. This happens energetically when we come to an overview perspective where acceptance waits. Honoring our soul choices and valuing all the participants involved in our life lessons. Then we can learn how to merge with the master plan of our soul's commitment. This plan is the circum, uh, circulating path containing all the turns of our human experience. It is lined with our individualized agonies and ecstasies, our triumphs and defeats. The painful events we encounter in polarity often nudge us out of our sleepwalking comfort zones as a wake-up call to our soul's journey. When we arrive at the single path that leads to our center, we are coming full circle, challenged to be the love and acceptance that we search for. 
On a transpersonal Jungian level, this growth process of our enlightenment can be applied to the current struggles we encounter when meeting our shadow. Represented as the unconscious part of our ego, it often gets carried away with the job of supervising our lives. It will rise up to engage us in a battle of wills, creating the illusion that we are lost in a maze as victims of life. And if you ever felt that way, yes, it's your, it's your ego telling you that. Devoured by our own imposed obligations. In this arena, we will feel caught with no other choice than to continually sacrifice our energy by feeding our addictions, sabotaging ourselves, and inappropriately giving pieces of ourselves away to others. As initiates to our wholeness, our challenge is to enter into our deepest fears and sorrow without getting lost or stuck in hopelessness. The hero's journey is to move through the dark night of the soul, experience and emerge transformed. Many individuals don't make it to the other side and stay lost in self-pity, denial, anger, and grief. Remaining stuck leads to self-destructive behaviors. To successfully travel into the corridors of our being, to face our ego survival patterns, we need to be wise enough to open to the assistance of our feminine, intuitive nature and utilize the key. She holds. This is our inner voice that links us to our inner core. It acts as a guide wire and serves as a lifeline to help us find our way through the maze of life, helping us navigate when we are lost or confused. We are reversing the illusions of duality, rewriting our soul contracts to become anew. We are changing our reality, our direction, and our world. We are birthing our emerging divine child selves, your inner child, by simply breathing in the love that we are. The seed of the new male and the new female are breaking open which are aligned with this new energy. The ego ruled parts of ourselves that are still caught up in the old games operate from a closed, defensive posture of control. Forgiveness and compassion are what we need to transfer the soul scars of our fragmented character and to dissolve into the presence of love's awareness. Within the twisting turns of our life path are the soul pieces we have sacrificed or lost along the way. But we can't retrieve them until we face our shadow selves. We accomplish this by being brave enough to feel our feelings, owning the undesirable parts with compassion. Our shadows can't find their rightful place to release the power they hold over us if they are locked in a position of authority by our fear and self-judgment. And we are our own worst critic. The light of our real essence is freed and regenerated through the acts of awareness, self-forgiveness, and self-acceptance. We must go to the Mother Nurturer, Lady of the Labyrinth, to show us how to bridge the gap between our shadow side and our true nature. Between what no longer is and what will be. Our focus is to be in the unseen realm, tapping into the feminine energy that is essential to birth our authentic self. We are to become the female receptacle, integrating both polarities. Meeting and transforming our shadow side means examining and repatterning the divisions that we have carried forward. Because, you know, when you're a kid, you're whole, you're happy, um, and then the grown-ups start, you know, shaming you, parting you out, telling you this ain't right. And, um, and then teachers, and then other kids, and, you know, people start making you feel bad about yourself. So then you don't know, who am I? Well, who should I be? Um, and so you become fractured all over the place. To retrieve our feminine self, we must retrace our golden thread back to our beginning as we review the places this was de denied in our life relations. These are to be replaced with the new female hologram characteristics radiating goodness, 
endurance, strength, worthiness, self-assurance, and dignity. As the stereotype patterns of codependence and martyrdom are reviewed, we redefine the parameters that have des designated the space where women felt they belonged as subservient victims. Um, back again to that, you know, old model of male-female um, where, you know, the woman was to be under the man and all this. And, and some people still say this. I mean, I, I had to shoot a few people down a while back on this. Um, that's not what Jesus said. That's not what God intended. You know, uh, they were helpmates. God created them male and female. Um, traditions of men change that. Women have to raise themselves out of the roles of being passive, weak, accommodating, and self-sacrificing. Um, and again, in the old school way of thinking, that's what you're taught. You sacrifice yourself for your man and your children. Um, and you're the good little woman. And what does that get you? What does that get you? <laughs> exactly. Not a freaking thing. Um, the men's role in this is to allow the division of power to shift into true equality. Until the power balance is righted between the old male and old female limitations, we could not regain the role of the androgynous being. Which, you know, at the heart, think of that um, as a child. You know, you had no sex, you, sexuality, you had no sexual preference, you didn't, I mean, you're innocent. You're just a being, you know, like the beings in heaven, you know, there's no sexuality. Um, that's why the, you know, the guy who asked Jesus, you know, whose wife will this be? And Jesus is like, they're not, it's not like that in heaven. You know, you're not given in marriage in heaven. It's, you know, asexual. I don't know if you can imagine that, but <laughs> that's the way it is. This healthy female brings the new healthy male qualities by being firm, steadfast, flexible, and supportive with disciplined actions. When we integrate the healthy new male-female energy, our minds become the servant of our hearts, bodies, and emotions instead of its dictator. When we can unite the polarity within, then we are constructing the divine marriage in ourselves which is the home where male and female reside together in each individual. The key to the changing of the guard is to let the old, divided aspects of ourselves go in order to make room for the balanced interdependence of the new. During this changeover period, the old and new appear to coexist. We have arrived at a crossover point where the new energy is propelling all of us to evolve to the next level. We are not merely swinging from the masculine to the feminine side of the pendulum. The turning point is requiring each of us to consciously join the wings of our new male and new female polarity as the transformed butterfly. The labyrinth is resurfacing at this time as a potent self-determining tool designed to unite the polarities of yin and yang energy. Walking its twisting paths is intended to bring us into a state of harmony, balancing our internal and external movement while connecting both hemispheres of the brain. World happenings indicate the need for individuals and for countries to release the old imprints of power and control in a process of reversal to set things in harmony. Today, more people are looking for ways to find meaning in their lives. Labyrinths are resurfacing as aids for transformation, connecting us to the wellspring of wisdom within our inner selves. More individuals are led to build a labyrinth on their land. It's a place to meditate, problem solve, grieve, and heal. And that's our class bell you heard back there. Um, so that's all for now. I um, hope you found this educational, informational, um, and I'll leave the link uh, where you can... Uh, you know, help support this um, educational outreach if you so choose to. Um, that's all for now. Until next time.